by an overwhelming vote, more than 90% of the members of the Avocado Growers Bargaining Council of Fulbrook, California, approved a 25 cent for price for avocados. With a collective bargaining program, the producers last year went from 9 cents a pound to 25 cents a pound under contract, and some prices reached a 40 cents a pound. Their president stated that their yardstick of success is what they do together, and holding action is what will make this plan work. Welcome to U.S. Farm Report, a public information program brought to you in the interest of agriculture, rural business, and the well-being of our nation by members of the National Farmers Organization in this area, and others interested in having American agriculture receive cost of production plus a reasonable profit. The American farmers and ranchers are building a brighter future for agriculture through the National Farmers Organization, the organization that awoke America and represents the leadership of agriculture. U.S. Farm Report now features the big swing to NFO with Homer Smothers, treasurer of the Avocado Growers Bargaining Council of Fulbrook, California. Here now is W.W. Butswain, director of NFO Information Department. Thank you, Don, and Mr. Smothers, I want to welcome you to our nationwide U.S. Farm Report. It's certainly a pleasure to have the Avocado Growers Council come all the way from California. Well, thank you, Mr. Swain. It's a real privilege to be here. And uh, I know that about a year ago, we might back up for the audience here and review that about a year ago, or a little over a year ago, uh, in 1967, uh, Mr. Smothers here, Homer Smothers, came all the way from California to attend the big NFO meeting for action and to find out all he could about NFO collective bargaining methods and how the Avocado uh, Growers Bargaining Council could adapt this to their commodity and get a price for them. And he was very much surprised, as he told me, that NFO welcomed him with open arms and, and sat down and visited with him and told him about all of our bargaining methods, much more than he had hoped for, and he thought that we were going to charge him for the information. But I would like the audience to realize, everyone listening to realize, that we're a member, or we're a, a group of producers brought together under the Kappa-Volstead Act, the legal structure that gives the farmers and ranchers a right to bargain for their own production. And we're all producers. Fact is, uh, Homer, if you, if you don't mind here, I might touch just a little bit on the Capra Volstead Act. Yes, indeed. Uh, to set the legal stage yes. for everybody's mind. First of all, it became law in 1922, February the 18th, 1922. And the Capra Volstead Act gave the producers of farm and ranch commodities the legal right to act together in associations, uh, corporate or otherwise with or without capital stock, in collectively processing, preparing for market, handling, and marketing in interstate and foreign commerce, such products of persons so engaged. Such associations may have marketing agencies in common. In other words, NFO can be the marketing agency in common with the avocado growers, the wheat growers, the corn growers, the corn growers already realize this, and their, their president has been an active member of NFO for a long time, and more and more groups are joining this big swing to NFO, but they can make the necessary contracts and agreements, and this is why it's such a tremendous pleasure to have you here, because just a little later I'm going to have you tell about the contracts that you already obtained for avocados. I'd like to point out one more thing. This Capra Volstead Act, Senator Capper made it loud and clear that its purpose is to give the farmers the same legal right to bargain collectively that is already enjoyed by corporations. And Senator Volstead said that the object of this bill is to modify the laws under which business organizations are now formed so that the farmers may take advantage of the form of organization that is used by business concerns. In other words, it gives us the legal right to become better businessmen. Now, when we first started working on NFO, well, there were some that said it was illegal. 
And this is why we like to keep repeating this portion of the Kepler Volstead Act. Some of them even went so far as to say it was un American, Homer. Yes, indeed. Now, yes, people in our country said that. Right. But in a test case in the Supreme Court in the state of California, get this one now. This has just happened recently. In a landmark decision, the Supreme Court has ruled that agriculture cooperatives must limit their membership to farmers to be exempt under the antitrust laws. And it goes ahead to tell about the case, and it says this in conclusion. Implications of this decision may be far-reaching. Other well-known co-ops may be vulnerable if their membership is not limited strictly to the producers. Well, this is the reason I'm happy to see you folks adopt the same rule of producers and producers only to get yourself a price. And now, Homer, I want you uh, to tell this group briefly, after you came back here, about your experience, how you went home and put it to use and the success that you had. Well, Butch, uh, you know, after our prices went down to eight cents a pound, and uh, we were producing tonnage in excess of previous years, only to realize less money for it, we became aroused. And we rode off in all directions. This is about a year ago, last April. And uh, not until August, till I came back to the NFO convention, did we know there was such a thing as the Capra Volstead Act. We knew the NFO had a program, they were doing something, and it had some legal basis. But it was here where we learned this. And so I carried it back, and then we got our show on the road using NFO know-how. As you told me, you went off in one direction instead of going off in a dozen direct, right. Uh, right. direction of price. That is right. And furthermore, it uh, uh, triggered a cooperation among our membership such as we didn't have before. So now we had everybody working for this program, Price and Bargaining. Our Farm Bureau members, our union members, our Grange members. In fact, they're all serving on our board, but we're working with the Avocado Gorge Bargaining Council for our price, just as NFO uh, is doing and we learn from NFO. Well, we're, we're certainly happy that this worked, and as I understand it, you brought your price up from this low of about eight cents uh, to over a quarter. Uh, that, the in fact, is you established a price of 25 cents a pound. Uh, didn't you tell us about how this, uh, how this worked? Well, this is very interesting. Actually, we didn't think we'd do anything last year because we thought it would take a whole year to get even enough tonnage and enough acres and enough members to do anything. But uh, when the price started down, as it does every year, when the crop comes on, uh, we got aroused. We had a meeting, we discussed this thing, and there were those there that felt we had enough to uh, express our will. And uh, they voted unanimously for a 25 cent price, and we went out and signed a contract. And some of the handlers were reluctant. They'd pay 22 cents, 23 cents, 24, but not 25. But when they found out the avocados were going to the people that were signed the contracts, and they had overhead to meet, they began to raise their price. So at that time, brisk competition entered the field, and we actually moved our crop from 27 to 32 cents. In other words, when they become determined that you were going to have that price, they didn't even fight you. They just started giving Correct. you the price. Some handlers even said they welcomed it. And uh, didn't the price go quite a little bit above the price that you asked for yes, in order sir. to try to break your efforts? Yes, it did. And as a matter of fact, uh, the price went up and wound up at the season at 40 cents. But uh, this uh, has been established, this principle, and we've redone the job again this year, just before I came out here this fall. And we left the price at 25 cents, just where we established last year. In other words, when the processors of farm and ranch commodities become convinced that the farmers and ranchers are going to have a price for their production, they don't fight anymore. They go ahead and pay it. That's right. They recognize we're just using the same principle that they've been using. I think probably, Homer, that, that uh, part of your success might have been 
this Supreme Court decision, they knew that you were all producers, that was taking place in California because one of the things you might not have known, this trial was going on at about the same time you were establishing this avocado price. Yes, and, uh, I recall. Uh, it was announced yeah. uh, just before the first of the year. Yes. Now, I think there are several things that are significant in this. And uh, to make the story complete, I think the key thing, Homer, Mr. Smothers, I should say. Just Homer. Because you've certainly done a good job. And I'd like to point out to the audience that the avocado growers are made up almost entirely of real distinguished Americans. Mr. Smothers here was counseling psychologist at Drake University and also counseling psychologist at Iowa State University for several years and retired. And he went out there and he saw the tremendous cheap price that he had to take for his avocado grove, which he'd bought for retirement income. And so he started to work on this deal. And you might tell us, uh, Mr. Smothers, about some of the other outstanding people, and then we'll get into this cooperation is the key. Yes, uh, Mr. Swain, uh, actually, uh, there are some rather illustrious people in our uh, avocado uh, industry and in uh, the Avocado Growers Council particularly. Uh, of course, Cliff Dapper and Duke Snyder uh, who came out there and established their ranch when I first bought my ranch. Uh, they've been very prominent in our work. And uh, then Henry... Aren't they well-known baseball oh, players? Oh, yes, the Dodgers combination of you know, the king, home run king, and uh, Cliff was a, a great catcher, but, uh, voted the most valuable player one year. And Henry Henningsen, now he is a little uh, my senior. Uh, he was a movie producer. He produced uh, Colvadis and Ben-Hur and other uh, famous... Uh, and I played bridge with him about once a week. And Dolores Barrymore Costello uh, also is a member. And uh, these people, uh, maybe they don't need the money from the avocado, but they just hate to raise something and sell it at a loss in an American uh, enterprise system. Mm -hmm. I think they have one other thing in common, that being in the things that they were in before their retirement, that they realized more than probably farmers that are farming now realize that cooperation is the key. Yes, the success yes. of anybody. Yes, and I might mention that Stan Clark, one of our real wheels, uh, pilot for American Airlines. Uh, and uh, talk about, I'd just like to mention, uh, Butch, that uh, in my 11 years' uh, experience out there, um, I have sold to two different co-ops and to one or two independents, and this was what we were striving to do, to get a price. And uh, sometimes we got a cent more, a half a cent more. But we found out when you're raising this at a loss, it doesn't make very much difference, really, whether it's one cent or, or two cents difference. Uh, the, it didn't amount to very much. So then we uh, began to get together and uh, find out that we had a commonality. We were producers, and we were more than just rugged individualists. We had an interdependence, we, a resource that we had to tap and utilize if we were going to get a profit for our avocados. So this, this graph here shows pretty much what happened to us. Uh, here we are, you might label us whatever you want. We have Farm Bureau members, we have uh, uh, union members, and uh, we have uh, uh, other co-ops, but we're all on a common level here with the Avocado Growers Bargaining Council. So uh, then using NFO know-how and uh, utilizing the Capravolt Act, which we knew nothing about, we were able to get this price established, so cooperation is the key to it. And it's interesting how some people that uh, might be of uh, opposing views on this or that or the other thing to a real uh, point of hostility uh, have got a commonality when it comes to raising their product and marketing their profits. So that brings them together. What you're saying is that as soon as they realize the situation, then they all become members and work together. Correct. And when these people here join hands, the producers of farm and ranch commodities throughout America, when they join hands and work together on the legal structure of the Capra Valsid Act, this is real proof that it can be done. Indeed it is. Because uh, they couldn't classify you people as little insignificant, uh, rugged individualist farmers that didn't amount to anything anyway. And you might be real interested, Homer, to know that the research by several universities throughout the nation has proven that NFO members are the same way, that by and large, they're bigger, better farmers, more formal education, I think out of an 18-point grade sheet, we were clear at the top at 16 of these points, the NFO members. Yes. So then they quit calling us little inefficient farmers that were going broke anyway. So I think cooperation is the real key, and, and I'm certainly glad to have a psychology teacher
because he knows what it takes, the cooperation that it takes to make it, get the job done. We don't know anything about psychology, but we do know as individual producers that we must work together. We do know that we have the legal right under the Copper Volstead Act. Why should we wait any longer? Let's get his price, the same as everybody else does. Tell us just a little bit about some of the bargaining efforts and how they lied in front of you that you never would be able to, to get the job done. Well, we uh, organized a bargaining committee, and uh, Stan Clark, uh, the man that belongs to the union in the uh, American Airlines, who had bought their price up, uh, he was our uh, one of our main uh, fellows in this, and Al Chaken, a lad, came out of New York City, out of Harlem area, and uh, so uh, when we started out on this uh, this price, we ourselves didn't know too much about uh, what it should be, but we began to figure out the costs, and we utilized the University of California statistics over a period of years, and we found out that it cost so much to raise an avocado, then we figured that we ought to be entitled to return it as if we had our investment uh, in an apartment house or something else, and, and the boys begin to see this. So uh, when we established this price, which this minimum price, and it was a minimum price, we felt that it should go above that, and it did go above that. But when we established that, uh, handlers, even co-op handlers, said there is no such thing as 25 cent avocados this year or any other year. And uh, actually, uh, our experience has proved that very few people know exactly what the farmer can get for his product when he's united. Well, I think this is absolutely yeah. true, uh, especially most people don't realize either, Mr. Smothers, that how very little the farmer does get. Right. Very few of them realize when they were paying maybe uh, 49 cents for an avocado that just weighed a few ounces that you were only receiving eight cents a pound for those, uh, which would take, what, two or three avocados to? Yes, to make a pound. And incidentally, we found by research that the retail price of avocados does not vary regardless of what the grower gets for them, or regardless of the crop is big or small. It's an interesting thing. Well, sure it is, because we've always said this, our research shows this in the NFO too, that the grocery stores, the chain grocery stores are well enough organized that they're going to get all the traffic will bear regardless of what they pay for it. Yes. I remember when we first started working when uh, over in my area, one of the big packers of the nation pointed out that if the farmers gave the packers, the processors, the hogs, that meat wouldn't be very much cheaper. Boy, you know, from a psychological standpoint, this was a dandy. Yes. You yes. know what I did? I got on the television the next day I used the newspaper and quoted it word for word as they had put out, and I said, by this same summary, their same observation, if they paid us just a little something for them, meat hadn't ought to get much higher. <laughs> and this is true, certainly, of your avocados, that if they pay you a decent price for them, they won't get any higher. That's right. And incidentally, on this cooperation we were talking about a moment ago, I'd like to just mention one other thing. That is leadership. Now, uh, we have leadership in our president, Cliff Dapper, who uh, used to catch for the Dodgers. And uh, I think in any organization, whether it's a local or whether it's your state or whether it's your national, uh, all the Gores ought to get together and back, recognize leadership. Or this is, a sol is another secret to the success of this whole program. Well, if they'll get together, they'll sort out their leadership yes. and work for a price. Yes. It won't be long until they'll know which leadership is working for that right. price. Right. I say this, that in a modern free society, the organize or the individual, the strength of the individual is the organization. By the same token, the strength of the organization is the individual member of that organization. Right. And it's his job to sort out that good leadership yes. and put it to work. Well, you've done a terrific job here, and uh, we had uh, evidence of this when uh, Ralph Kittleson came down and uh, spoke to our uh, picnic down at Fallbrook the 13th of September. He gave a masterful address, and uh, everybody was there from all segments of the economy and the avocado industry, and they were enthusiastic, right down to a man, and well, their wives, too. This is what it takes. If you have confidence, others can be persuaded. And the universities have always taught us that if you're going to have effective community action, there's four requirements. Number one, there must be a pressing need. Number two, there must be a plan of action. Number three, there must be competent leadership. And number four, there must be widespread public 
acceptance and understanding of your program. Well, most certainly, in your avocado group, you had the pressing need when they were down to eight cents a pound, one third Indeed, of what it did. cost you to produce it, which is the same true in agriculture. You had a plan of action when you adopted the NFO plan of action. You had competent leadership, so it was just a matter of cashing in on it because they were getting all they could from that avocado anyway, regardless of whether they took it from you for nothing. So I think that this is proof to everyone that collective bargaining will work. We'll get into that more just a little bit later. Now, Homer, we were just discussing about the four requirements of effective community action, which is what the Avocado Growers Council accomplished and what the NFO is accomplishing. Uh, the number two point, now nobody will disagree on number one, that there's a pressing need. Right. Nobody in, right. that's making a living yeah. from agriculture no. would, would even question, question this. No, that's right. Now, uh, number two, the plan of action. I know that you fellows adopted the real plan of action, but I wish you'd tell them just a little bit about it. All right, after we sign this first contract for 25 cent avocados, uh, as I mentioned a moment ago, the, uh, there was a reluctance to come up uh, to that. Uh, I wanted to mention again uh, uh, the, the uh, techniques that was used by some of the handlers to, to defeat us. They start buying a, a, a variety of avocados that we don't pick till long about April, the half. We were selling furitas at this time. So we had a meeting, and uh, they wondered how to solve that problem, because this would defeat our contract with this person. It would drag the price down. So the boys voted 100% to uh, put the floor price, the minimum price, for half the 25 cents, and to declare a holding action on half for 90 days. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and that did it. And we have a letter uh, from one of the co-ops saying that that was the most significant thing in this whole battle. Uh, how many days did you have to hold in this 90 days? Well, we actually, within 30 days, they were starting to pay 25 cents for halves if they wanted them. And if the halves was large enough and ready to go, some did sell. But the bulk of the crop was reserved to the normal picking time. And uh, uh, as I understand it, avocados don't get ripe all at once, so you're in a real bargaining position. You're in a real bargaining position from another standpoint, that it takes several years to grow those avocado trees, and they can't go over in some other state and set up a group of farmers over there and take advantage of them the way they have us in the livestock business or in the edible bean business or any other commodity that you want to talk about. That, that is right, Mr. Stanton, but in spite of the fact that only 10% of the people in the United States know about avocados, they t still use the supply and demand cliche to, well, to defeat the price uh, of the grower. In other words, <laughs> you being a psychologist, you know that the supply and demand doesn't have anything to do with it. Not a thing. Not Absolutely. Not. Now, uh, one other thing that I, I would like to point out, in a recent survey uh, where the Don't Agriculture surveyed thousands of farmers, and I think this is real significant because you, you told me just before this program that you realized a tremendous difference in the attitude of the producers throughout the whole nation that there was a year ago when you were back here. And I'd like to point this out. The most recent survey, several thousand producers, a whopping and I'm going to hold this up so the camera can see it. A whopping 96 and 5 tenths percent of the producers surveyed uh, farmers uh, said that farmers must have favorable bargaining power. 96 and 5 tenths percent realize it. Well, let's review for a minute that when we started, nobody was talking about bargaining power. Yeah. Uh, they said it was illegal. They said it was un-American. They said a lot of other things. Yes. Of course, you're a psychologist. You know who puts yes. those thoughts yes. in their yes. mind. Yes. I'd like to, to point out one other thing. The two-thirds of them, we surveyed, said that they thought bargaining on price would be possible on corn, soybeans, wheat, cattle and hogs, and so forth. Now, this is what we've said all the time. Also, they pointed out that of those thinking this, 64 and one tenth percent thought that the existing farm organizations should do the bargaining. Well, I'm sure glad they're coming around to our way of thinking because the NFO has the only legal structure that's set up at the present time of producers and producers only, as far as a farm organization is concerned, to do this bargaining on all commodities. Yeah. And this is why your group came to our group 
to get help. Now, let's, before our time runs out, I see it's getting short, and we used avocado green here. I noticed that. On the tablecloth. Let's talk a couple of or well, a minute that, at that, least that, about avocado. That triggers uh, something in me. <laughs> Here's a little uh, recipe book, uh, Butch. I gave you a copy of this the other day. This is put out by the uh, Gourmet Society, and uh, it has recipes in it for 141 uh, different ways to use avocados. And uh, so many people are uninformed about the avocado. I'm just going to read a paragraph or so here uh, from this. Avocados go a long way. They can comprise a complete luncheon, a light supper, a good beginning for dinner. Also, they can run out any meal wherever they are needed, as appetizers, soups, salads, side dishes, vegetable dishes, desserts, or as a colorful garnish. Avocados are thoroughly satisfying with excellent nutrition, plus a safety factor that makes them very helpful in low-calorie diets. Low-calorie diet. This is important to all America nowadays. Now, Homer brought me back some avocados, and I'm telling you folks, they're delicious. If you haven't tried avocados, go to your store and get some. And if you're a member of some other farm organization, and you haven't considered collective bargaining for agriculture, let's get with it. Get your organization to do like this organization has done. Come back here as producers and producers only. Let's join the big swing to NFO. And I'd like to touch for half a minute here on the fact that all over the country they're beginning to come in editorials. And uh, I might say this one here was from North Carolina, Clinton, North Carolina. And it says this. The title of it was NFO, Does NFO Have the Answer? NFO might not be the answer for the farmer, but at least it is attempting to find the answer. And so far it has put out more reasonable approach to solving the problem of disappearing American farmers than has the government or any other farm organization. That's terrific. And Homer, I know that, that you want to present me with something here. Yes, Butch, when I woke up in my Dodge camper this morning, I had enough light to fill out partially my membership agreement. And I want to be the first person to join the, uh, a, uh, the uh, NFO over the TV. And I wish that this would trigger uh, a reaction from many, many people over the nation to join NFO, and here's my check, and will you witness this? Please? I most certainly will, Mr. Smothers, with a great pleasure. And folks, this is what's taking place all over America. Let's keep the ball rolling. Here's a good example. Down in North Carolina, one meeting, 50 new members fill out a membership application. Wonderful. And I could go on and on telling you about the tremendous success that we have had and are having. But I never hoped that it would ever come to the day that it would be this nice and this easy to get new membership. It backs up what we've always said, that all producers will be members as soon as they understand our program. And when we got psychologists like you out there uh, telling the story, yes, sir. working on all types of people, Homer. And professors like you, Butch. Professors <laughs> like me. Yes, sir. Folks, it's been a great pleasure. Go to your whole meeting. Fill out your membership application and send it in. Or better still, if you don't have a membership application, mail in your check to NFO, Market New Membership. And we'll see you in St. Louis. See you in St. Louis. Farmers and ranchers throughout the United States are joining the big swing to the National Farmers Organization, as you have just witnessed. U.S. Farm Report has presented the big swing to the National Farmers Organization with Homer Smothers, Treasure the Avocado Growers Bargaining Council from Fullbrook, California. Mr. Smothers was formerly with the psychology department at Drake University and from 1960 through 65, counseling psychologists at Iowa State University at Ames, Iowa. The farm income pattern sets the nation's prosperity and the National Farmers Organization represents new thinking in a new generation of agricultural producers. A brighter day for American agriculture.